Hello and welcome to this episode of the Matt Belair podcast, where every week we bring you guests to help you master your mind, body, and spirit. If you want to transcend your limitations, learn how to tune into source energy, and learn more about yourself and consciousness, this episode is for you. Today's guest is a wisdom teacher. She is an incredible writer, a massive spirituality and consciousness educator and influencer. You may know her from her amazing insights on the at Idillionaire feeds on Twitter and Instagram. Welcome to the show, Idol Ahmed. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. I'm doing great. Where, where are you calling me from, you said? Uh, San Diego? I'm all the way in San Diego, nice. California. Amazing. And this is your, this is your uh, maiden voyage into the podcast world. I'm excited. It's, it's a journey, so it's time to take, you know, take myself to new places and have new experiences. That's what life is all about. Mm. Yeah, and for people who, who don't know you, um, you have an amazing Instagram feed. Um, one thing that I really liked uh, when I was introduced to you is I got to, you know, look at your feed and read what you're writing. And I think that when somebody writes to the degree that you have, it's just clear the amount of uh, depth of wisdom and information and insight you have. So um, I guess, you know, what inspired you to start those feeds? Um, was it just was it an outlet for yourself or something that you wanted to share? Um, a lot of the times. A lot of the times I my own self have, you know, been going through different growths over the years and um, I decided that I was going to find a place where I could actually share the message with people. Um, and at first I was just writing how I was thinking, the thoughts that I was having, and it just started gravitating um, towards other people who are in alignment with the message that I'm spreading. and. For me, it was just genuinely sharing experiences um, and finding out ways to actually write so people can relate to it and giving people hope through my writing and going out out there as like a voice of expression of being open to spirituality, questioning reality, being open to the idea of what's more to life than, you know, the day to day routine that a lot of people live in. So I was really motivated because I was experiencing a lot of that in a way where I was having such profound thoughts and insights of me being curious of what life holds, you know, what else is out there besides being, like I said, in, in routine. So once I realized that I started just writing as a way to express myself, you know, express my inner thoughts and doing it in a way where other people can understand and relate to it because everybody has the different levels of growth, you know? So I had to learn that with my own writing, like how to, because sometimes you'll have these really profound thoughts and it's, it can be difficult to put them into words that for people to understand. So that had to be like something that I, I worked on over the years is learning how to convey the message. And this is what I do now um, through my social media platforms is to simplify spirituality, um, awareness, and help people increase and raise their vibration so they could transform their lives. That's beautiful. I love that. Um, so, you know, we, we had had a meeting uh, about, I'd say, a few weeks ago where we kind of touched base and had a chat. And, you know, you, you and I were kind of in the same boat where – when we were growing up, it was like a little bit different. We were kind of, you know, perceived things a little bit different already, but you still had um, growth and growing up to do in this understanding that, you know, we are infinite beings and, you know, we can do really anything. And it is a, you know, growth and, um, you know, process of evolution. Um, but with that kind of mindset, you know, what do you think is, you know, what do you think um, the different beliefs that you held that maybe separated you from, um, you know, being just the average, you know, everyday type of person. And, and what do you think that, you know, with your writing and a lot of people reaching out to you and asking you questions, um, belief systems that people have that they're either unconscious of, that's keeping them limited, that's preventing them from, you know, opening up to uh, spirituality and growth and, you know, a real connection to source. Um, I know it's kind of a few questions all wrapped in one, but maybe you can mm -hmm. comment on that. Yeah, yeah, I think um, the conversation that we had was 
about, about how, how did we get to the place that we're at that. now on a spiritual level. And for my own self, it wasn't really some kind of struggle or pain. It was really just me already understanding what I am. And that was something that was nurtured in childhood in, in not losing my ability to be able to question. So I had a lot of questions, you know, for my parents and um, they actually were like, what, what are you talking about? You know, and, but they encouraged me to continue on with my process of thoughts, you know, they didn't really shut that down. It was almost like, okay, well, that's different. Even though they couldn't answer the questions, the ability to ask was still allowed. So with my own curiosity, you know, this is something that we're all born with. I think we, I mean, we all have that gift. And what happens is a lot, a lot of people go through life forgetting that. And their light is becomes dimmed because of the fact that they start to take in the external reality to be more real for them than what they can, what they're actually are capable of, which is what they think in their mind and the beliefs that they have. And that usually stems from you deciding the way that you want to perceive reality based on being in tune with your spirit. So for me around 11, I would say, or 12, I had an understanding that curiosity and questioning of what things were were so important because I was in tune with my inner voice. Um, and the inner voice is, um, it's, it's your spirit that you're connected to when you actually hear it and it's guiding you. And most people shut it down because the external belief that was um, portrayed to them is something that blocks that part of their, um, their abilities out. So for me, it was, I believed in myself. Like I had like such a strong feeling of anything is possible. Um, I had a, such a hunger for learning and, you know, understanding the reality around me and just being super curious and knowing that I could apply myself and do the things that I want to do. I was really living in my imagination uh, really early on in life. And, and I didn't think I was any different. I just thought we all had this ability. I was like, wow, this is exciting until I started talking to people. And, you know, they started, you know, telling me like the advice you give is just so amazing. And the way you think it's so different and unique. And that's when I really started to sit thinking to myself, like, this is something that I've cultivated. Like this, I didn't even really realize it was different until I was like in high school when I started seeing different belief systems and different minds. Cause we're all a collection of whatever our parents tell us or whatever we learn at home or whatever, whatever you accept to believe within society. And I was coming from a place of live through my imagination and then externally in the physical world. So I was inspired through my spirit and genuinely blind to what's considered a limitation on the external and so when somebody would say something to me I would almost like they, they don't believe that something like such as is possible as far as the abilities that they have or what they can do um, so curiosity continued on you know I, I was very interested in the and what reality is like, what is all of this? I think that's a question that a lot of people have, but they don't follow, they don't follow the, they don't seek the answer. You know, they're kind of just like, okay, I don't want to, I want to like numb myself from this whole thing. Cause it's trippy. Like, yeah, you know, there's like all of, there's things we can't explain. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to question life, you know, to question your reality, to question things that are much deeper than what you see in the physical. So and um, I was actually enwrapped in, 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 in that kind of thought process. So in my expression in the physical realm, I was super interested in science um, because I was like, you know, there's research being done um, on what's going on within the universe, um, what's going on in, you know, within the human body, what's going on within the environment that we're living in. So I was very curious about nature, plants, animals, the ecosystem, the human body like that was like food for me and then every time I was in that state of mind I would now have conversations with people and they're like wait I'm not even thinking about that I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing this weekend like you know so I like we had the conversation the last time we've chatted and you were you know in the same experiences so it's a gift to be able to keep your curiosity to keep your ability to question 
And that's something that I've nurtured over the years. Um, and that's something that I encourage through my writing because I see it and I've seen it for so long and I see how I am experiencing through reality through my imagination. So when I have those experiences, when I go out into the world and I talk to people, I'm no longer in that playing field of this is, this is the problems that I have. This is what I'm going through. I see that level of how do you bring potential into, into people's lives? How do they feel like they can do it? Um, and those are the questions that I answered through my writings um, by empowering and uplifting those who are, who have forgotten their light, you know, um, who have forgotten what they really are, who have got, who have gotten caught up in the day-to-day -day life and um, to be able to be inspired by the surrounding, you know, to look beyond what's in front of you. And that takes, it takes a lot of work. Um, and, but at the same time that can be sparked in you. So through my writing, I love communicating with people. I talk to, you know, my, my whole idea is to pass all the mental limitations and communicate with people's spirit. So when you communicate with people's spirit, you surpass all the chatter, you know, and that's something that I've learned how to do over the years. And that's what I share through, um, through my platforms and my writing uh, is to empower people and to know that they, they also have, um, and there's something that they need to bring back to life within their own self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, and it definitely resonates in your writing. Um, for me, one of the big things that you said, you know, is the belief that, you know, I can, that anything is possible. You know, you just have that ingrained belief. Um, when I teach in sport or in business and I'm coaching someone, a lot of it is helping them get to that belief that they can create that business, that they can, that they can, um, succeed in what they're trying to do. Um, and then the other element is that imagination, you know, as you imagine, um, infinite possibilities with the belief that you can do anything. Well, now you're a creator. You're now in charge of your life and you're getting to create your reality. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's something that has not been taught, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that's something that a lot of people have, um, is the power of their mind, you know, the power of the imagination. You could simply close your eyes and I mean, I mean, your, your imagination is, has no limitation. You could travel anywhere, you could see different things, you could picture anything you want to picture. And I don't want to become numb to that ability, you know, to think that that's just something that I don't know, I don't know what it is, you know, that's something that's just there. I do, you know, before you leave your house, you imagine exactly what you're going to do from you know, for example, you want to go grocery shopping. You sit there and you picture yourself driving. You picture yourself the things that you're picking up. You don't do anything without tapping into your imagination. So now when you communicate with to people in a way where it's like, hey, you have that same ability with what you just did right now to plot out your whole day. You are just laying in your bed. You're like, all, these are all the things that I need to do today. You actually visualize. You use your imagination to plot out your day. You use your imagination to help you pick out what, you know, what area or what route to get to where you're going. Um, you, you picture the stuff you're going to buy before you buy. You see yourself in the store holding that item that you're going to get. This happens so quickly in your, in your mind, but you don't question what that is. It becomes such a normal thing to, to a person. So now the same ability is used in other ways of creating. So now let's talk about you using that same imaginative ability to create an experience that you want. I don't know the how you start to feel uncomfortable with doing that because with other situation, you know, you're going to get in your car, you know, you're going to go, you're going to go pick out the thing that you want. But this other situation with your imagination, with, which is as powerful as you doing the first, um, you know, your first, when you wake up and you decide to, you know, you want to go buy something is the same exact state as when you sit there and you want to imagine yourself having an experience. However, it's harder for a person to believe that because the way it works is like they want to, they, they want to know how they're going to do that. And that's the question, that's the how is what makes such, brings you to such a limited, um, it brings you back into limitation, you know, because the way the universe works and the way this whole process, you know, of how things happen, it's, it's unexplainable. You know, you, you set your mind to something that you want to happen. And you might even go through something that you might not want to to get to that visualization or that thing that you wanted to manifest. Um, but 
you don't allow yourself to surpass that because you automatically start to think it's not possible. So teaching people how to tap into their imagination, which is something we use every single day, every single moment, it's a part of us and it's a part of, you know, this is the gift that, um, and learning how to use it, how to um, attract to yourself exactly what you want from this experience and train. You know, you go to the gym every day or you go work out, but do you train your mind? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a big part of understanding how the mind works is training it to see the images you want, making the images as vivid as possible and really believing that. So it's almost having like two, you're living the physical and the spiritual reality at the same time, you know, and, and sometimes the physical reality is so real to people that they forget they have this other part of themselves that actually visualizes everything that they experience. I mean, there's nothing within you or around you right now that you did not manifest. Yep. Every, everything in your surrounding is a thought that you once had or a feeling or an emotion. And you brought that all to yourself, you know, but then the minute you, you manifest the thing or you have the experience, you even forgot how you got it. You know, so that's like a huge, it's teaching people about energy, teaching people about spirituality, teaching people about the power of their minds and giving them, you know, that power back. That's what I, uh, that's what I'm here to do and, and here to express through my writing. Amazing, beautiful. Um, with with uh, that ending point, what is what is spirituality to you, or connecting to you know what does that mean for you? Spirituality for me was seeing like the first time I've even really had the experience of spirituality for me was seeing um, and seeing the fact that we are not this physical being alone, Mm -hmm. seeing her body, seeing her transition, seeing that happen just to me. You know, I started thinking like, like further deeper into the energy that embodied that, you know, that embodies this physical realm. So for me, spirituality is knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm a higher power of what exists in this physical realm and knowing that this physical reality is powered by an energy that's greater than what we see. So for me, always living in my imagination and always understanding that, like seeing the way everything works, seeing the, you know, the way your body functions, seeing the way, you know, the whole environment moves, seeing the process of life and death, you have to understand that spirituality comes from a place of, that's beyond the physical. Um, however, it's a part of what we do and learning how to use and be in this in the space of using your energy then comes back to you understanding that spirituality is a place of peace. It's a place of understanding. It's a place of knowing that you're much more than the physical. So therefore, you're no longer limited by what you see because you're a believer. Mm-hmm. And if you're a believer, you're living in your mind. You're living in imagination. And it makes you a visionary. Um, so you see things that um, a lot of people might not even notice because what's real to you is what you believe within your own mind. So you, you strengthen your faith to understand that we are spirits and we're constantly attracting everything around us to our own selves. Um, it's a place of peace for me. And once I've understood that I'm beyond this, I no longer worried about how something is going to happen for me. I'm no longer concerned with, um, worries and you know having overthinking and and feeling pain because all those bring me back to the it makes you so physical you know you forget that life is a journey and it's an experience you're having Mm. like and I always look back at that moment when I saw my great aunt transition like sitting next to her and seeing the process and and then looking at her body like afterwards I mean it was really it, it sparked some it activated some you know some parts of my, my DNA are, you know, to remind myself or like to realize that it's, we're beyond this physical realm, you know, so to not take life for granted and to fully be present. So that's like a huge one for me. Amazing. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with all that. I have um, pretty, pretty much similar views. It's just, you know, um, understanding that we're just not the, the body, you know, understanding that we're not our jobs, understanding mm-hmm. that there is something um, deeper to all this. 
And so I guess I'll give you another big question um, with, with going down this track, what, you know, is the meaning or purpose of existence? Um, you know, why are we here and what maybe perceptions or questions or um, beliefs or anything, uh, not someone listening, you know, if they're trying to find a little bit more meaning, a little bit more purpose, a little bit more connection, um, because life can be chaotic and some, some people are in a chaotic um, space. Some people have life and, you know, it's pretty good. But, you know, through religion and how that's all gone down, we've really severed this connection to spirituality, I think. Um, they've really just taken it and they've butchered it when there's so much beauty and wisdom. And we just kind of reject it now. Well, actually, me and a lot of people that I know, because it's like, this is messed up. You're, you know, you're telling me that if I believe this, this guy's going to hell forever and this, and then you got to hate gays. And then it's very like, seems like anti what the person was like expressing, you know, an infinite love. So we've kind of pushed it away. But we forgot, you know, about that we are spirit, that we are um, infinite beings. So um, yeah. how would you tackle all of that, those deep ones, and, and your thoughts? I would say the state of unconditional love, you know, and people have forgotten that, that they are exactly the same within. Um, there is the same source of light and energy that, that we all have, you know, the external Part of ourselves is, is our unique creation um, and each person forgets that that they are spirits and when you forget that you start to now operate in a in a lower energy state which means you're in a competitive mindset you're in a um you're i'm better than you um and and when i'm better than you i feel better about myself and so people have forgotten that there is no separation they forgot the you know the law of oneness um that we're all connected. Uh, we all share the same space. Um, so that's a huge, I mean, this comes from belief systems of people in their early childhood being told that, you know, they're the chosen ones or they're the you know, different, you know, religion or belief systems that separates people or um, however, with all of that, once a person awakens or once a person gets to a self you know, realization state of mind, they'll start to understand that there is no difference between who they are and who someone else is. Um, and also is respecting other people's beliefs and differences. You know, not everyone's going to think like you. And that's something that causes a lot of problems. Everybody's trying so hard to make everyone do and think the same instead of appreciating uniqueness. So if we're not appreciating uniqueness, we don't encourage uniqueness at an early age. So it's to say, hey, believe this thought or, you know, start to act like this. So finding the purpose in, in your life is understanding I believe number one is learning how to use your mind, um, how to um, how to use the energy or how to utilize the energy of your your heart, which is love. Um, how to surpass hate and fear and all of that, and that comes from understanding that there's no difference between you and anybody else um, on a on a spiritual level. You know the physical and anybody who does something on a physical level, they always experience pain. You know, they, which is karma. Um, and they don't realize that, you know, hate only hurts the person who feels it. Mm. Spirituality is something that frees a person. You know, if they free, you, you're free from hate, you're free from judgment, you're free from um, thinking that you're segre segregated or different from another person. You actually really have an appreciation for um, the uniqueness of expression from each individual that you're around. So you support that and encourage that. And that's something that I do is encourage expression and when you encourage expression you allow the heart of the person to open because most people have a fear of, of being them their own self you know they have such a hard time being themselves because everybody's always judging them so you have to learn to to allow people to express from their heart to allow people to express you know their truth and purpose for a lot of people could be you know attaining a goal but guess what once they attain that goal they start to feel empty again They'll be like, this is what my life purpose is. I'm here to do this, um, whatever that idea is. And sometimes you even have to question, is what I want to do in life something that's been ingrained in me or something I feel within the spirit? Yeah. So purpose is defined by you living within your spirit, you being happy, joyful, and elated doing what you do, um, being excited to wake up every single day to do the things that you do, being excited to be able to give back to people. You know, you empower others when you empower yourself, 
you know, when you empower others and you have that emotional connection with all of all humans and learning how to touch, tap into that is really where power and, and love and unconditional expression from the source lies. So it's a lot, and a lot, a lot of the times when you're, you know, you're younger, people decide for you what you should be doing, you know, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a teacher. Um, you might not like that. You might not want to do that, but then you've gone so far into it that you think this is it for you. And then you find yourself kind of going through life without ever really living your purpose, which is living through your spirit. Um, and living through your spirit is finding what makes you so alive, finding out what makes you so excited to, to experience a new day, you know, um, things that are filled with, with giving back, things that are filled with, with love and joy um, and connecting with the person that you're seeing and learning how to be authentic as possible, um, having your own definition of what life is, but not the things that you've been taught, but for your own self. And that's going to take you overcoming a lot, of, a lot of the limiting beliefs that you hold. And it takes... One, it takes you tapping into your spirit. Everything else takes care of itself. All you have to do is be open to, to saying, I'm not going to be defined by, you know, by society and what, the, what I should be doing, but I'm going to actually follow my heart today. Yeah. This is exactly what I'm going to, you have, you have to be strong about it. Like, it's not like, okay, I'm going to follow my heart one day. One day I'm going to listen to that inner voice that's guiding me. One day I'm going to, you know, do the things that I love, but right now I'm just going to, you know, do what I don't like, like hate the things that I do. And every time you wake up and you hate what you do, you're taken away from your own self. Mm. This is your time of existence in this, in this reality. This is the time of your life to full. I mean, you have to tr fully trust and follow your, your spirit. You know, the, the inner voice will guide you. You just have to listen and you have to, you have to understand, you have to ask questions. Speak out. What what is my what is my greatest expression, and how can I fully live in my spirit? I speak out loud. I talk to my my inner self. I have the conversation by asking questions, and I think a lot of people fear that. Um, they fear the ability to to be guided. You know, you're guided by an inner light, and to not be afraid of the outcome or the how, because you're so you're so used to people are so used to wanting to know how everything's going to happen. If yeah. you don't know how, I don't want to do that because I'm so used to getting from, and that's, some, that's something we've been taught in school. You know, we, we, we plan out our lives and our lives and we want to, we want to follow an idea of what we were told to follow. We're not really following our spirit and inner guidance is just really, it's unpredictable. It might, you might, your inner voice might say, you need to quit your job and move, get in a car right now and go. So, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean like that's how that's how much like in the flow you have to reconnect with your your spirit like you have to understand once that voice comes on and you ask yourself like this is what i want to do you have to be ready you can't sit there and just be that's how random it could be you know because you, you can in your mind you're planning okay well um what I want to do is going to occur through this person. And then afterwards I'm going to get to this place. And no, it's like, Hey, quit your job right now. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait, how am I going to pay my bills? Don't ask questions. Just quit your job. Mm -hmm. And if you can get over that moment, that's when you start listening to the inner voice. But if you talk yourself out of it, no, I can't because I have this going on and this is going to happen for me next week. And I'm so scared. Now what happens is you have ex you have closed off. You have like said, I'm not listening. I'm going to actually do reality from a perspective of how things are going to work for me rather than what's possible for me. You know, so it's, it's pretty trippy, but it, it starts to teach people how to let go, you know, because you think you're so in control of everything. Like I want to control how everything happens. I want to determine how everything happens. No, I want to, I want to speak out what I want. I want to visualize what I want, how it's going to happen. I have to be ready for it. You know, so that's how you truly live in your purpose is reconnecting with that inner voice, finding out what you're truly passionate about, meaning feel so good.
good and you know you're you're elated and you have like a you're you're excited um you're passionate that's how you know you're living in your spirit um and nothing is going to stop you once you're in that state so tune in and and get going amazing i love that that was uh, there's so much just uh great insight and wisdom in that and you know what i i love all of it but uh what i like is you know, <laughs> it's, it's all the truth right it's um you know the masters kind of say the same thing you talk about letting go and so um jim carrey has a, a, his amazing commencement speech i think and i don't know if it's commencement or whatever it was but he just talks about certainty right so we we run this pattern of this safe right the safe route and then yeah. we, we think it's safe it's a false illusion of certainty you know what I mean? And so, mm -hmm. you know, that going in is kind of like our personal test. You know what I mean? It's saying I'm also like giving over and you now start to live your life in a whole new way because you realize there really is no certainty. But as you keep doing it over and over and it becomes normal now, you have more faith like that, uh, you know, that faith fall or whatever and they catch you. So you're kind of doing that with the universe you're like, oh man, all right, you know, and you just drop back and and hope it catches you and it always does, you know, it always mm -hmm. does, but you have to have the courage to fall back and you have to have the courage to listen to that inner voice to get it going. And then you're going to start learning all of these lessons along the way and start to live and change your life and, and the people you're around and everything you do. So um, it's a very beautiful yeah. answer. Um, Thank so you. um, you're, you know, very also analytical you know for me i'm you know i'm bearded bushman i'm happy to sit in the mountains and meditate <laughs> do weird stuff um and i remember growing up science always pissed me off because you know i was looking at like energy healing and reiki meditation and astral projection and there's no like science for that at the time anyways i'm sure there's plenty of science for it now um it's like why would you you know you got to prove to me that it works and that was kind of me versus science my whole life. So I was like, fuck you, science. Um, but, <laughs> but, it's, but science yeah. is great. And, it, and, you know, Tesla was a scientist. We have amazing scientists. Science is amazing um, if it's, you know, done in an open um, way. So for you, and, and also being very uh, intelligent, uh, interested in science, um, how does science play into spirituality? Can we use some of the concepts that you've learned uh, learn there or are there are there some exciting things going on in science right now that we can apply or just know about or what's going on in, in that front because it's a bit you know we've kind of said science and spirituality are separate but now it's coming together you know we're learning to play together because it's all one and the same yeah well with i mean i think a lot of scientists the space that they're in is they're questioning reality they're questioning ways that they can further understand the things around us, um, which is great, which is why I got excited about, you know, science and science is not only one topic, it's, it has to do with, you know, physics, it has to do with the human body, it has to I mean, research is the, it's, it's kind of understanding what our human potential is. Um, however, the scientists who are doing the research can also be limited because they might not think something is possible. So they might also assume like, this is the, my research, all I want to focus on. However, there is cutting edge science that has to do with proving telepathy, um, proving the connections of humans, um, how we're all one, you know, how we're all sharing similar energies, um, how we're able to project consciousness, you know, consciousness being something that's the space that we occupy, you know, um, and everything around you being so alive, um, everything having frequency, plants being so alive, you know, we might just look at them and think, oh, that's just a flower, or that's just a tree. But it has a, a source of light, it's thriving, it's living. Um, so science and starting to understand or understand how there's an energy that runs everything, you know, and there's some things that really can be explain so this sometimes it could if you're somebody who's a visionary or somebody who understands stuff you might be like this is possible you know but science hasn't got there because they're trying to prove it mm -hmm. and there's things you can't prove you know so it's exciting to look at the research that's out and the research that i mean that's today that's like hey that's possible or 100 years ago or 50 years ago it was like that's not even that's not even 
unfathomable. That I can't even imagine that, you know? So it's beautiful that we have technology and science that are moving forward. However, people like ourselves or people who are visionaries who sees where things are going, you don't always have to be so stuck in trying to prove everything. You know, mm-hmm. you just sit there and say like, that's possible because I believe it. And we have not even discussed the power of belief and the energy that flows through the mind. Once we start to believe in ourselves, you know, there is, um, there is different parts of our bodies. Like I was talking about the other day with one of my friends, we were talking about the reticular activating system, which is a part of the part, uh, a part of your brain where, Once you, it helps, basically what it does is it helps you block out all the noise. I mean, there's so many things going on around you in your environment. Um, If, you know, there's cars, there's noise, there's just so much stuff going on. However, your, the reticular activating system customizes the ability for your own mind to focus on what you tell it. So all of a sudden you're like, I want to get this brand new car or something like, and then you start to see the car everywhere. So why is that? So your brain is working for you to say, hey, well, since you've been thinking about that, let's focus on it more. You know, um, so this is something that's the research that was done on how, you know, the neural system of the brain works once you decide on a particular thought or once you decide on a particular thing you want to experience and how your mind um, and your brain kind of shuts out things that that's around you that you might not even notice. And it focuses on what the things that you're thinking about. So you might be like, oh, I heard that there's a song that could be playing around you all day long. You will not hear it. But once you decide, once you decide, once you hear somewhere, you're like, I like this song a lot, actually. You start dancing to it. All of a sudden, you're in a coffee shop. The song is playing. And you're like, wait, what? Like, the song has been playing all along. You just haven't paid attention to it. But now that you showed interest and you like it, the song has become something that's a part of the forefront of what you are interested in. So once you realize that, you start to think, wait, if my brain, my reticular activating system, is working in a way where it's showing me what I'm thinking in my environment, letting me hear stuff that I think in my mind. How do I now use it in my into my to my advantage? Mm-hmm. That's a very powerful question. So once I realized that, you know, with that research or that understanding, I started saying to myself, "Okay, the environment around you only changes because your mind changes. So it's not like you're having a bad day. It's today you're having a bad day in your mind." All of a sudden, you're dealing with people in the streets that you just, oh, and then to prove to you that you're having a bad day. I already knew today was going to go, you know, horrible. But your mind now focuses on what's horrible in the environment. Mm-hmm. Everything, and then the next day you wake up, and you're like, I have the best day of my life. I'm so excited. And then it proves to you that you're so excited that you're having the best day of your life. So this goes back to the research that's there. And how do we utilize that research to our day-to-day lives and applying that? So once I realized that, I started just completely, if I'm focusing on, if my mind is showing me a particular, I mean, if my my mind is noticing particular colors, particular sounds, why why don't I decide the things that I want to see, the things that I want to hear? Why don't I decide how I want my day to be instead of just being, oh, I'm, I'm sad today. I'm hurt today, you know, Um, and then you're expecting that to be shown to you within your environment. So that's a a huge um, experience. And I kind of touched a little bit upon telepathy and there's research that's proving that's been done, you know, at Stanford university where they're realizing that the human, the ability to have telepathic communication has no distance. There's no, you could be somewhere across the, across the world. Um, or you could be in a, in a, you know, still, a still dome that blocks out electromagnetic fields. And the person is still picking up the images the other person is sending to them. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, what is that? You know, what is that ability to project thoughts and, and, how do you even understand the thoughts that you're getting into your mind and like how to understand thought influence, you know, like how are you experiencing the thoughts that you're having and are they yours? You know, are some of the thoughts you're having influenced by your environment or you hear something going on and all of a sudden you believe that to be true for your life when it's really not. So you start to have this imaginative fear because you create a story around that, that image, you know? Um, So when I think about the, when I started going into the research of telepathy and understanding, like this is something that's 
not something that I'm just experiencing, but something that's really happening and people are experiencing it. And a lot of the most common ones are, I was just thinking of you. You just called me. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking of you. Just text me. I was just about to call you. Oh, I was just thinking about you and I ran and you run into the person. Mm -hmm. These are once again, going back into you having a thought or that person having a thought and then the physical realm aligning the experience. And then for a moment without saying, Oh my God, I'm so powerful. The person says, Oh, this is trippy. What a coincidence. Mm -hmm. You know, not really understand. Like I, I'm the kind of person I sit back and I'm like, wait a minute, like what's happening? And like I get not only did I get excited, I don't even call. I don't sit there and say, oh, I don't know what that was, or I don't know, that was a big coincidence, or whatever. Like no, I literally sit back and I just going in. I go into like the possibilities of what we can do. If we did that, if I'm projecting a thought and I'm having the thought that I that I was thinking in my physical reality, I'm experiencing it. What else can I do? Mm -hmm. So don't just, if you experience something that makes you see a greater, you know, ha ha has, um, that shows you your potential, don't sit there and just try to answer it off. That's what you do because you want to like just numb it off. Like, oh, I don't, that was a coincidence or I don't even know how that happened or that was really weird. No, embrace it, question it, be more curious, allow it to influence a new thought within your own life. Um, so this research is out there. I mean, if you're not looking into it, then you're just probably thinking like, this is just trippy. Like, no, there is research on telepathy, um, which means that we're all one, we're all connected. There's an energy source that we all share. And that's the ability that we have to be able to project this thought. Um, but if you're so, if you're so concerned with being on, um, you're so concerned with race or being segregated or being so, you look different than me, you have different beliefs than me. When are you going to get to the ability to understand telepathy? Because mm -hmm. you're just so caught up in the physical realm that you're not even appreciating your spiritual capabilities, you know? So that's something that I, I definitely would understand. And also now going back to, like you said, you know, you, when you first started questioning science, you were talking about healing, right? I mean, same thing with my own self. Going to um, UCSD, I was studying human biology and um, trying to... I was studying that because I was super excited about understanding my physical body. Like my curiosity was just how do I get to know my, my own self, you know, even further. So the most um, profound moment was when I first saw a cell division, you know, I think it was a freshman year and sitting there and just seeing a cell division. I wasn't thinking like, Oh, this is a cell division. Let me take notes and you know, let me memorize how it happened. And let me memorize how I'm going to like regurgitate it on my exam. No, I was flipping out. Like, <laughs> I was sitting there like holding on to the chair that I was sitting on like what the hell just happened mm. you know like like I'm not like I'm not this kind of person that's just like I have to see it how I see it and just kind of I'm looking at it from a place of what is moving all of this stuff mm. what's caused I mean what is the, the source behind look how that cell is moving you know it's filled with so much life um so it empowered me even further to even appreciate what my body does right people don't even think about their body because they're so in it they're so it's, a, it's their day-to-day -day life like you see it you don't even take into consideration the amount of work the amount of um amount how precise um the, the divisions of your cells are how precise and how everything is in order right so I was sitting there tripping off, like, whoa, like, what did I just experience? I thought I, was, I went on, like, a trip, right? I thought I had, like, an experience out of body or something. Like, so I laughed, and I was just looking around the classroom, and nobody was really freaking out. Everybody was just like, oh, okay, like, you know, preparing for the exam. Um, so sometimes when you're so used to having to get a good grade or having to do all of this, I have to make sure I get to – you don't really appreciate the essence of what's happening in front of you, which is – there's so much life going on around you, but every day you get in your car, you drive to your work, you don't even look around, you don't even look at the sky, you don't even look at the life that's happening all around you, right? So when you get so caught up in that, you start to kind of diminish your, your spiritual essence. Um, I mean, you have the ability to reaccess it, but you become blind to what's more than what's around you. So after that, I once that experience happened, I was just like, well, this is what I want to study, this is what I want to do. However, I did have the mindset as well of like, 
helping other people um, within the health industry, you know, helping people learn about their bodies and advance. But I was looking at it more from the medical field. But then as I kept going on, I started realizing like, you know, the point of what we do is really doesn't focus back on like um, healing. It kind of fo focused back on like, you know, medication. And that was something that really, I was, cause I was so caught up in like, you know, living in the spirit and still appreciating the science and the research and the ability to look in the microscope and see a cell division and see like, um, you know, taking like sea urchins, doing like reproduction for sea urchins and like getting excited about that. Like that was fun for me. But then when I started realizing there's this whole other industry to this, like that people don't believe that they're going to take control over their lives by thinking about the way they eat, thinking about the way they expose, what they expose their senses to thinking about, I mean, it was almost like that didn't even exist. So it kind of tripped me out too. Cause I was like, I love that. Like, I love this two sides, you know, like, but why, wait, why are people not realizing that you can heal yourself by taking responsibility for your life, which is now, I think it's, I think that's something that a lot of people have a hard time with because everybody just wants to pop something, you know, like I just want to pop this will solve my problems. I want instant gratification mm -hmm. because your body is healing takes, takes, if when, once you understand cell division and you understand the body on a molecular level, you start to notice that like, when you're in when you are in like a healing state mentally your body you allow it to start healing you so you start to allow the clearing out of the you know the old cells the new cells coming in with a new energy because now you're deciding from a mental perspective this is how you want to rewire your dna this is how you want to re rewire your cells so you project that thought within your own mind and suddenly you start to get into a healing state but nobody's having that conversation right so it becomes because it, it's not that somebody's doing this to people, it's that people are doing this to themselves because they're so caught up in the instant gratification mindset. They're so caught up in not even knowing where they're, you know, what the ability of their body is, right? So if you go to somebody right now, you're like, where's your pancreas? And they're like, no, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you where, you know, this, this store is and where this part, you know, where I can go get this stuff. But how do you not know your own system? And that's one thing I realized that people are waiting for somebody else to do the work for them. And that's why it becomes easy for somebody to dish out something to you for, for like a pill. Take this pill. It'll work. Okay, thank you so much. You know more about my body than I do. Mm -hmm. You know, so healing is really empowerment of self, right? Um, so it's really not the system to blame. It's really not science to blame. The research is to blame. It's really the individual person wanting that because they don't want to, if, if you're taking care of yourself, if I'm taking care of myself, if the next person is taking care of themselves, we will not have a system like that. So now it's to educate people in a way that where, what, which I like to do for my own self is educate in a positive state. Like I'm not going to sit here and tell you like something, this is horrible or that's bad. No, I'm going to say, hey, why don't you try to consume this? And, you know, why don't you try to try this thing or, you know, this, this, you know, rewiring of the way you you actually believe in something to be true for example cancer when people say f cancer i'm i actually <laughs> i actually feel uncomfortable because most people don't understand cancer they look at it from a place of okay my my family member died from it so therefore i hate it um but instead if you say well how how do you take how do you take care of yourself on a day-to-day -day? well no i'm I'm, I enjoy eating artificial foods, right? I'm eating artificial foods, but I hate cancer, you know? So now it's the pointing and blaming game. Mm -hmm. It's the victimizing game. It's no longer saying, hey, I need to take care of what I put into my system, which not only on a food level, but on a mental level, right? So healing and, you know, all of that stuff is the person taking the power back into their own self, but also teaching this at an early age to children, um, teaching them about the, about the body that they're, they're living in, the physical body that they're in. They need to know that. They need to know how everything within their system works and also allow the power of their mind to also penetrate the cell system because you actually affect and influence your cells. You know, and this is what epigenetics is. Mm -hmm. um, it's the ability to, you know, project, rewire and rewrite what what is destined for you not what your family members have been going through no there isn't like my mom had this i'm gonna have that the mm -hmm. only thing you share in common with your mom is habits you know
So if you have the same habit as your mom and she received a particular condition or, or something along those lines, then you're saying that's what I'm going to experience. But if you decide for yourself right now that I want to be completely different, I want to, um, you know, have a healthy mindset. I want to have a positive outlook on life. I want to eat better. I want to be out in nature. I want to live my passion. You know, str sickness comes from not living your passion. Every day you wake up and you hate what you do. Mm -hmm. You're already triggering yourself to feel sick because you're in a resistant state, right? So healing, um, health, and all of that is very complex and at multiple levels. So we can't just like say like it's one thing, but it's having a person a whole, as a whole tran you know, transform and transition from, you know, from neg negative thinking, um, from eating artificial processed foods, from exposing their senses to things that are not uplifting them. Um, stress levels as well. I mean, that's like a huge thing because most people are just sitting on their couch and imagining things to be horrible. Like they're sitting there worried about what's going to happen to them tomorrow. I was like, wait, that's not even happening, but you're just sitting there having a thought that's like so stressful. And this is when you're just sitting and you're talking to yourself. Like this is how it is. And I'm, 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 I'm having a hard time. And so, and it's really not happening. You're just sitting on your couch watching your TV, you know? Yeah. Whereas your mind is just going on a whole nother level. So I had a tweet the other day that I, I mean, this was such a, this is a thought that I was having, right? So it said, people create stories in their head about things that aren't even happening to them and then just sit there and worry about it all day. <laughs> yep. So I send that message out, <laughs> communicating to people. How many of you, are, you guys are sitting there right now talking to yourself, having a conversation Instead, you could be using that energy in a productive way to create your next experience. So that's the messages that I'm always putting out. Um, and it's exciting. So definitely be open-minded to science um, and, and research, but also do not be limited by the state it's at. You know, So that's where spirituality comes in. Because when you're a visionary, you see that, like, I believe I, I can heal myself. I believe, like, that's possible. I believe that you can heal yourself from anything. And that's how strong my belief is. It has nothing to do with, so when somebody says that's not possible, that's your belief, mm -hmm. right? So it's never going to be possible for you. I'm not going to get offended that you don't think that, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to show you, right? And there's so many, I mean, there's people curing themselves left and right. And each story is different. Somebody's like, I cured myself through juicing carrots for two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody else might say, I cured myself because I finally decided to do what I love to do with my life. I cured myself. So everything that's happening to you is really not an, a problem. You can look at a disease as a problem, but sometimes it's an opening space for a person to suddenly realize, what do I need to eliminate out of my life? Instead of for them to answer that question, they become victims of, of, of fear. You know, So find your purpose. And be excited for life. Um, and that's, I mean, that's something that I truly believe. So in my writing and, and the things that I want to talk about to people, the, you know, the things that I speak on, it's always empowering them. And for them to know they are the power, stop using your mind in a way to, you know, to harm yourself or to create stress in your life is actually use it in a productive way to actually change your reality. And those are the things I love, love focusing on. And you said so much uh, stuff. <laughs> I, I just love how you just kept going um, because I, you'd say something and then I would take it like kind of note. And as I came and talk about this, so I have so many things, um, but I just want to give, you know, my own feedback and all of that because I 100% agree. And, you know, there was so much there. Um, but I think one of the big ones was talking about limitation. Like when we're talking about telepathy or healing yourself, right. And, and something happens to you and you believe you can heal yourself. And someone says, oh, you're going to die, you know, because you have a terminal illness, and you're like, that's not my belief. Um, you don't accept their limitation. People, you're getting limited, you know, um, beliefs being pushed on you from other people, from sometimes family members, from culture, that say this is your limitation, and people take that limitation around, like, let's say telepathy. It's a, it's a bit of a stretch for some people. Um, but then they want to prove to you their limitation which is the scary part rather mm -hmm. than the opposite being infinite. You know, it's like, what if uh, telepathy is possible? What if it's a skill that I could uh, cultivate? What if I could heal my body? 
isn't that a more empowering belief anyway, even if you were wrong? You know what I mean? And if you don't give yourself that opportunity, if you don't give yourself that chance, it's never going to happen. You have to open up to the possibility first for it to even be a possibility. Mm -hmm. So true. And so that is, that is real. Yeah. 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 Did you want to comment on that? Cause I was just going to, yeah. I mean, I think for sure, like, I think sometimes it can, it can even go the opposite way. Somebody has a profound experience and they go out and share it with people. And everyone's like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't believe in anything that you're saying. So for that second, that person loses their hope. It's not only the person who yeah. believes it's possible, but also the person who believes it's impossible. So people who are telling you something is not possible can some can sometimes influence the person who had the experience to think like they'll start questioning themselves. Wait, am I am I the one that's tripping out? Is this even real? Mm -hmm. You know, no. If you have these, I know that everybody has a particular conversation in their mind. I know they thought about this. Let that voice become tune it up. Let put put it on speaker. Let it start to speak through you right so don't be afraid and and if you are different don't be afraid to share yourself and also if people don't believe in that that's fine this is where you have to continue on um people will not see the same vision as you because it's in your mind right, right. so don't expect somebody to be like oh i get what you're saying and don't seek approval for that right so now going back to the person who thinks things are impossible you are blocking yourself from one of the greatest experiences in the world. And that's possibilities, potential. And if you limit yourself in that way, then you're just going to live in a state of saying, yep, I told you so. I knew life was negative. I knew this was going to go wrong. I knew this. Yeah, because you are creating that. And if you don't even know that, you're going to be stuck in the cycle, which leads to stress, which leads to depression, which leads to you know, self-harm or whatever. Like there's these dark energy that becomes over you. Instead of you thinking like I'm powerful, you have given into the fear of something is not possible and then wonder why your life is going the way it is, right? Yep. So yes, be open. When you hear something that's new and that's different, say, wow, I wonder what that's about. Not, oh, that's not real. Because that doesn't even allow you to thrive. Like you are even, you're not doing yourself any, any, any service to growth of growth and understanding instead you're limiting what you can and potentially do within your own life. Absolutely. I mean, imagine you're, you came into this world as a baby and you see people exiting and it's like, what in the world's going on? Like, how can you not look at the miracles of reality? Don't try to explain it off. You know, explaining things off is the way, the way that you lose your power. You just, Oh, that's why that happened. You know, sometimes you see things in the peripheral of your eye and you're like, oh no, that's my curtain moving. You know, you're not open to other dimensions or you know, things within our own reality that could be around you. You know, so you explain everything off. Um, learn to question, learn to to ponder and, and ask. And also if somebody's introducing you to something new, just do it. Try it out, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's super important just the way that you're perceiving everything, right? People aren't seeing everything as a miracle, you know, like how a tree grows, a flower, you know, we know about photosynthesis, Jesus can say that word. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't mean you really know how the how that tree is growing and what exactly, you know what I mean? There's just magic everywhere. And when you watch the cell divide, it's magic to you because you're in that perception and you're right there in it. And so something will happen, like law of attraction happens, serendipity. We prove to ourselves, you know, the universe is always speaking to us. And then the reaction from a lot of people is like, nah, you know, and they make a reason. And and I want to touch on this is their own storyline. Mm -hmm. You've got to observe your storyline because you're, that storyline is, it's going to keep adding to create your limitation or your belief it's going to keep building like an nlp when you have a belief you know you start to look for reasons why that you have that belief so if you believe that you can succeed and they're going to be abundant your mind is already tuned into oh you know i see this guy he was successful so i could be successful too oh i see this random event i haven't seen this guy forever and he's connected to this guy obviously Obviously, I'm going to get in the right people to make my dreams happen, you know. And so as we tune, we're continuously 
talking to ourselves and that's our internal dialogue and i wish that we could create a machine that would monitor our thoughts right and then i guarantee you you know you you um wrote this on your instagram it was spot on the other day it was about the power of your thoughts um and one of the ways that i put it is like your thoughts are like each thought you have is like a little catapult of play-doh you shoot out that kind of is yeah. holding <laughs> the reality but it's doing it a day or a week or a month in advance, you know, but it's all getting lined up somewhere. Um, so if we could chart out our, our um, uh, repetitive thoughts, we could view and look at our storylines and what we said to ourselves and read that and review that every week. Yeah. Guarantee so cool. our reality would match that. Where can I get this? Yeah. Right. We get, well, science. <laughs> it, science we got to create it. Both. You're getting close, man. We I gotta get into. We gotta. Yeah, I mean that technology is. You know, AI is just something that's happening, right? So, I can see that. I can see that being something that we're able to to put out, project our thoughts, and see what what we're actually putting out there. Um, we see that in our day to day life, but now it's like people, like you said, if some people see it to believe it. So help people like that to see, you know, where their thoughts are going and the results of the thought that they actually had. But I look at it as like, what experience am I having in this physical realm right now? And that's going to be the result of what's going on in my own system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you um, earlier, because we were talking about miracles and you and I both live in the space of miracles. Um, I've seen miracles that everybody in the world would be like, holy smokes, that's a miracle, like, you know, healing or something. Yeah. I've seen some of those and it's like a freaking miracle. But also I believe in the hippie miracle where, where there's a flower, like, you know, holy shit, it's a miracle too. I can sit and observe this amazing life or, you know, so in you living in this, do you have like a story where you've either, what's your craziest personal or story you've heard around like a, a miracle, whether, you know, telepathy or self-healing or anything along those lines? Um, I've, I mean, I've heard this. I mean, there's a lady that I'm really close with. Uh, she has a wellness center here in San Diego. And um, I mean, she's so deep. And the stuff she shares with me, I'm always blown away, you know, because she's a believer. Um, mm -hmm. And she believes she's all, I mean, she's like 65. And she's always reminding me of the power of belief. But the funny thing is, she didn't come to that realization until she was like uh, 61 or 61 but now she's 68 so she was telling me how much her life would have been different if she only knew this when she was younger you know so she's just so for her it's like she, she looks at it as a way of giving back you know so she talks to me and she's like you have to believe in the power of the mind and this is where science and research is headed and one day everyone's gonna like understand that they are projecting you know these, these negative thoughts into their mind right Mm -hmm. So the way, the, what sparked her, her change was she ended up getting cancer at like 60. And that was like the turn, you know, turning point of her life. Right. And she was somebody who, this is why like food has become secondary. Right. So she was eating very well. Uh, she was taking care of herself. However, she had really dark thoughts. Mm. She was in like a negative space all the time and she didn't really have so much of an appreciation for people on a, on a deeper level. Right. So for herself, she always felt, and then she also didn't feel good about her own self. So she was doing the health stuff to make herself feel better, but she still felt dark on the inside. So it was more of trying to maintain a particular external. She wanted to be appreciated on the outside, but she didn't feel good on the inside. Mm. So her health and diet was motivated by trying to be approved and accepted. So it wasn't really healing her. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, she ends up hearing that she, she's suddenly died. And also she ended up doing um, liposuction, which was um, something that was huge, right? Um, so, and she did that. Once she ended up doing that, she realized um, she ended up getting cancer in her lymph lymphatic nodes, which was right above where she got the, um, the liposuction and not only was it what she was doing on the external as far as liposuction but it was a dark state of mind and not having appreciation for people not having appreciation for life but also was always being motivated by trying to fit in and be approved and all that stuff 
I mean, on the outside, you'd be like, wow, you're just gorgeous, you know? But it took a lot of maintenance for her to be that way because she's worried about what people think. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, she was drinking juices, eating very well. However, it's a balance of all levels. People don't know this part, right? So she was like, listen, it's not the food. <laughs> She was like, it's your mind, you know, it's how you feel about yourself. Um, so she went through that phase. She ended up getting the cancer. The cancer was a, it was a learning experience to transform her life. It wasn't a, it wasn't a death sentence. Mm -hmm. She didn't look at it as that way. She looked at it as like, oh my God, this moment right now is time for me to tr turn my life around. Mm -hmm. She was actually thanking cancer mm. for waking her up. Mm -hmm. she was like I had a she said everything that I was worried about all out of the window she was no longer concerned with how she looks and what she was on like a threat of like I'm gonna be dying if I don't take care of myself like she had that thought in her mind it was she started like asking for guidance so she's like talking to her spirit guide me guide me like she didn't give in and say I'm scared I don't know what I'm, I mean she she was scared but she wasn't the fear didn't overpower her. It was the fact that she had sudden, like everything else, all the noise was dropped off. Like it was like all the stuff that she was trying to keep up with all gone. But now it's like, she's facing how she can make changes in her life. So her spirit started guiding her because she asked for it. She was like, I need to be guided. I don't know what's going on. I need to make my life better. And suddenly she started, what came into her mind was the stuff she's been doing. It was almost like she had to confront herself. Mm. She had to confront like how this whole time she's been trying to prove a point. She's been trying to be accepted by others, but she never accepted herself. Mm. She was trying to eat healthy to not for, you know, not really for appreciating what it could provide for her body, but more for so she doesn't, she maintains a particular, you know, look or whatever. Um, but then she realized what, what, what am I doing? What is all this stuff has been taking so much of my energy. Not only that, I feel down about myself because I don't even love myself. I don't feel good. Mm -hmm. So she started, it was like self-love. Forget all that extra routines and that nonsense. You've been trying so hard. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate your clients. Appreciate the people who come to you. I mean, I felt, I was like, something is different about you. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? Like, she sat me down, told me everything. She decided at that moment that she's going to take her life and live it from a loving place. She's going to love herself unconditionally. She's actually, she started having appreciation for living because she, she had an idea of like, oh my God, I might be dying soon, you know? <laughs> so it put, it put everything into perspective. Um, so with her switch of mind and thoughts, she started, her body started healing itself. She started healing from, from cancer um, and it was like a three month or four month process or something along those lines because she had to deal with all the years of self hate. And then she noticed she kept thinking, you know, the, her higher self and talking out loud and, you know, asking to be healed and being open to be healed um, and her deciding within her own mind that she can be healed. Mm -hmm. And that started happening the minute she started loving herself, the minute she started, cause she was already eating healthy, but she was missing the mental part of it. You know, this is why it's a huge balance. It's mind, body, and soul. Mm -hmm. Not just people always just preach just the food, right? Mm -hmm. No, there's people who eat really healthy who still go through this stuff because they're living in a negative mindset. They're, they're, they're living in a state of self-hate. So the miracle of what she experienced was healing herself by accepting herself, mm -hmm. by loving herself, by having a deep appreciation for love. You know, so that's what she, um, that's, that was her story. And I was fascinated by it. So that's what she told me. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, um, and that was that. Amazing. Well, it's so uh, kind of funny because I had uh, uh, a few podcasts back. Um, I think it was Sarah Ann Stewart. And she was telling me a story about someone, I'm pretty sure it was her, that um, healed himself of cancer. And I was like, Cancer is terminal, right? Like you're supposed to be guaranteed dead because everybody on my podcast has either A, themselves healed themselves of cancer or knows one or two or three people that have. So it just shows, you know, that like 
they're trying to project this belief. And we talked about miracles like Dr. Joe Dispenza, who wrote, you are the placebo breaking the habit of being yourself. Um, you know, I did his two programs, a uh, three and a five day and people came up on stage and there was, you know, cancer and all these other terminal things. Um, people had them for years, but through changing their mindset, changing their thoughts, daily meditation practices, switching the neural network and wiring in your brain so that you know if we're writing out that chart of our weekly thoughts it's not you know i hate myself you know fear right which is the big one is fear it's going from fear to love um and self-love and that's really the the truest transformation and i and i'd love to ask you your thoughts on how can somebody develop self-worth self-love because it can be so challenging i think that it's easy for people to you know, be loving and kind to others. And then we just are such dickheads to ourselves, you know, and um, I'm just curious if you have any uh, insights or, or tools or, or ways or stories that could help someone that, you know, they just don't feel good enough for whatever reason it is. They're, they're too short. They're too tall. They're too fat. They're too skinny. They don't have enough money. They grow up in poverty. They have dickhead parents. They were abused when they were a kid, whatever storylines are running, that is that they are continuing to run that is giving them that fundamental belief that they can't do anything, that they're not good enough, that they're not worthy, um, that no one's going to love them. Mm -hmm. you know, what, it, what advice do you have to help them just start that path or just make that full switch to, you know, you are worthy of love and, and you can start giving yourself love it, and you can do it in a way that's not narcissistic. That's not the idea. It's, it's to take care of yourself. It's to do loving things for yourself. It's to appreciate yourself, which can be really, really challenging for some people, for, for most people, actually. Um, I think it's very common when I do sports psychology coaching and even high level business coaching, you know, and these super successful people. And, you know, a lot of times I know that's exactly where I'm getting to, you know, and it yeah. thing and they're so successful, but you know, so yeah. I would say realizing that, like remembering the fact that you're alive, you know, like I just think of death and I'm just inspired. You know, mm. like, why, why do I, why am I wasting so much energy hating myself? Mm. Like, why am I, this is my time. This is my time. Like, this is what, it's like a, it's, it's a way of seeing things. And for you, the things that a person, if you're thinking about, oh, I'm like, you're, you're dealing with poverty or something. Mm. You're accepting that limiting belief to be real, more real for you. But when you start to worry about it, Right. Right. Um, so if you're dealing with a particular problem or limiting beliefs, it's to, it's to take yourself out of that state and picture yourself in a how, what state, well, if my mind creates my reality, right, and I'm able to get out of this, this you know, this state of being and the state of, you know, consciousness that I've attracted up to, my, up to myself, up to that point of my life, how do I get out of that? So the first thing is to rewire your thoughts, you know, like reprogram your, your thoughts from negative to positive. So if you're having um, a lot of dark, you know, like, oh, I can't do this, you're already telling yourself you can't do it. So you're attracting more of that. Um, so know that you can do it. So now you have to get into imagination, visualizing. Um, so when, when it comes to visualization, it's not what you see. That's real. So what's real is what you can see within your own mind. So if you see poverty around you, that's what you're going to continue to see. If poverty makes you uncomfortable, then that's what you're going to continue to see. Like you feel uncomfortable about it. Um, you're giving a lot of the energy to it, the emotion part of it. So now you have to take yourself out of it by seeing yourself be in that more um, of more of a light. So you can do anything. Um, and understanding that has to really be the projection of what the physical reality holds. Like I'm going to put, I'm going to get what I want out of here. I don't care what my mom said. I don't care what my mom's life was like or my parents' life were like, I'm going to decide for myself how I want to live. And it still goes back to the power of thoughts, the power of the mind. So if you give somebody that tool to realize like, Hey, I can create my reality through my visualizations and also being patient with yourself, right? Because people hear like, Oh, you can create your reality with your mind. They'll start to visualize. And then they're like, why is it not coming? What is it? And then they're like, Oh, it doesn't even work. And I just start and I just stop. Right. So be patient with your transition. That's what, that's something that I highly recommend all the time. It does not matter. You're not, you don't go from, you know, one way to the next, you know, when you're working out, it takes time to build your muscles. It takes time for you to lose weight. It takes time for you to be in the best shape possible. 
So just like that with the things you manifest and the things that you want out of life, um, if you're making changes that you've never done before, you have to sit there and say, wait, like, okay, I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to really believe it. I'm going to follow through with it. I'm going to wait and allow and be patient. But if you sit there and you just start to suddenly, you know, dig up what you planted or you suddenly just receive the seed is even growing, yeah. what are you going to do? Like you're going to take all of, all of the things that you plant, you know, you planted out and then you're suddenly freaking out. And so it has a lot to do with patience and letting go more than thinking you can create your reality because that's a big part of it. It's trust, you know? So mm -hmm. self love comes from you appreciating who you really are. Um, by understanding that you're not the physical body. So you can't even sit there and judge yourself and say, I'm really short. I don't like that I'm short. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're wasting time and energy on something that, like, what you can change is the fact that you can love yourself and to appreciate that you're short, right? Because you're like that for a reason. Um, but if you judge it so much, then you're going to start telling the universe a story of, like, oh, I can't get this because I'm short. And then guess what? You won't get it. It's not, it has nothing to do with you being short. You know, there's like a, there's like this uh, very inspirational speaker. Um, his name is Nick. He doesn't even have arms or legs. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've seen him, but okay. he speaks out to hundreds of people and tells them to believe in themselves. Right. So it has nothing to do with you being short, tall, having arms or no arms. It's the spirit in the body. Mm -hmm. That spirit that's in that body speaking through you all the time. Right. So when you love yourself, other people will be like, wow, like I love you, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason. Like, I want to hear what you have to say because you project love, you project light. You're so full of this source energy. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can literally not even, it doesn't matter what you're going through. I see people who have, you know, overcame like not even having an arm and they're bodybuilders. Right. Like their body looks so good. They work so hard for a why? Because the belief overpowered what they saw in the physical realm, which is a spirit. So it does not matter the fact that, you know, what you see, it's all about how you see the things that you see. So it's the, it's the inner appreciation for yourself to realize like, oh, somebody's not going to love me because I'm short. Somebody's not going to love me because I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm that. You will notice the people who love themselves the most, it does not matter what they look like they get the most love because they love them. And then what do we say? Oh, you have a great personality. You just look, you, something about you. I don't know what it is, right? So that's what people sense the most is your energy. You know, um, it's not, you'll see the people who look stunning, amazing. They, they're gorgeous, but they don't like themselves. Mm -hmm. And then people are just like, what's wrong with this person? They don't have a, their personality is horrible, right? Yeah. So it's the inner state that determines the things that other people are going to perceive. So if you want to, some, if you want to express love, you have to love yourself. If you want somebody to, if you want love in the environment and you feel bad about yourself, you're going to see people who don't like you because they don't, they, they don't feel good about themselves. So you're aligning yourself with people who remind you that you don't feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So everything starts from there. And when you know that, then you can start saying, well, if I'm projecting outwards love or hate or, or whatever, then I need to understand that if I'm attracting to myself love, hate, or, or people who think I'm short or I'm tall or whatever, then I'm going to start to feel like I'm going to actually start loving myself. And then you start to notice that people love you for you because you love yourself for you. Mm -hmm. And that's where things become like very successful. And everything you do stems from the, what you feel about yourself. The way other people perceive you is not the way they perceive you. It's the way they perceive what how you perceive yourself you know that's like a big part so if you if you love yourself and you're excited and you're full of light it's like i don't know who why i like to be around you but i just enjoy your energy <laughs> so that's what it's about if you're busy judging yourself you already disconnected from what you could be attracting yeah yeah so that's that. beautifully said and i think that you know a really um a good addition is you know we're saying like you know i'm using like physical characteristic you know too short too old not smart enough um i think that people will hold on to like a memory too or something that their parents told them you know because of this i'm not good enough when that's six months ago nine years ago 25 years ago you know and people will hold on to um 
uh, past memory or belief or something that told them. And then they'll hold on to that as their luggage for why they're not good enough, you know, which is That's so true. Good. So I think that, um, yeah, I think that what you said there is a really uh, beautiful and amazing answer. Um, I think that that's all our time for today. You were just amazing. Um, I know that you have things to do. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I just wanted to ask if there's anything that you wanted to say before we, we sign off. Is there anything you want to leave or you wanted to talk about that you didn't get a chance to? I, I mean, we can go for hours, but <laughs> I would love for people to understand that nobody can define anything for you but your own self. Um, and this whole experience of being on this earth is really you discovering that you are a spirit mm. and you discovering how powerful you actually are. And that's what the journey is about. And purpose is really living in your spirit. Um, I'm excited to have a lot of amazing things coming up. Um, my website's coming up soon. There's going to be really fun, great courses on there that people could actually use on their day-to-day -day lives to, to improve. Um, there's going to be an app dropping soon for a billionaire. Um, it's going to be a community of people and ways that they can continue to be empowered and constant reminders. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to all that's to come in this upcoming year. Um, but stay, stay motivated and stay positive. Awesome. Appreciate it. So where can people find you? Just at your website is the best way. You're on Instagram at Idillionaire, Twitter. I'm on in and yeah, I'm on Instagram as Idillionaire. I'm on Facebook as Idillionaire. I'm on you know Twitter as Idillionaire. Um, I'm going to be on the App Store as Idillionaire. I'm going to be on the website as Idillionaire. <laughs> awesome. So I'm excited. Everybody come join me and definitely enjoy um, reading what's already on my Instagram. A lot of people like to go back down and um, – utilize the post that's already there i actually take time to write these captions mm -hmm. um it's not just images alone it's you know very thought out captions and things that i want to share with people um and also working on a book now as well so just a lot coming up um a lot a lot of things that are going to give back to people and that's what it's all about amazing well i'm definitely looking forward to it thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your spirit and wisdom and insights uh, super beautiful. Definitely one of those people that have, you know, mastered the spirit and, and you definitely exude love and wisdom. So grateful oh, for you. you. I'm grateful for your work. So um, thanks for coming on. Everybody listening to this, definitely go um, check out your website, sign up for the email so you can get that book when it's coming out. Um, your Instagram's a wealth of just in, like real solid freaking inspiration. None of this like cookie cutter regurgitated, you know, quote, and then insight, you know what I mean? It's like, there's, there's definitely depth there. So it's a beautiful resource. So just uh, acknowledge you for who you are and what you're doing and just thank you for that. So thank you so much. Thanks guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Peace.